Did I buy every single Sims pack? Yeah. And is the first build I made after doing that a replica of the Cheesecake Factory? Yeah. But do I regret it? <laughs> You're gonna have to wait to find out. This video is exactly what it sounds like. I bought all the Sims 4 packs, I made a replica of the Cheesecake Factory. That's the video. But here's the thing. I didn't grow up with the Cheesecake Factory. I didn't have the Cheesecake Factory in my hometown. I don't know when they got started. I don't know when the first Cheesecake Factory opened. I don't know when they became what they are today. But what I do know is that I've been to the Cheesecake Factory three times in my adult life. Two times were decent, one time was extremely salty. And despite all that, the Cheesecake Factory has a surprising amount of significance in all of our adult lives. What is bringing the people to the tables? I don't know. But Miss Cheesecake Factory's PR team? Overtime baby. She has the cultural moments. She has the people on her side. She has celebrities at said tables. And me? I'm making a video about the Cheesecake Factory, even though I've only been there three times in my whole life. So kudos to you, PR team. Don't know what you're doing. So what brings us here today? Why did I build a Cheesecake Factory? After I made my last purchases to complete my Sims 4 collection, which by the way, was Betu and pet stuff, I said to myself, what is it that I can make that uses all of these packs that are super stylistically different and still somehow at the end make sense? And let me tell you, my one and only true thought, my moment of clarity, the only idea that came to me was the Cheesecake Factory. That's it. And here we are, making a Cheesecake Factory. I want everyone to know, if you're watching this video and you don't share my views, you enjoy the Cheesecake Factory, you visit the Cheesecake Factory on occasion, once a month, once a week, this is a safe space for you, okay? I don't want you to feel like I'm just going to be hating on the Cheesecake Factory this entire video. I am, but this is also an appreciation video because I've spent hours of my time becoming uncomfortably familiar with the interior and exterior of every Cheesecake Factory across the country. So at this point, I can't help but appreciate the absolute absurdity of the design of the Cheesecake Factory and the cultural significance around the Cheesecake Factory. So if you are a fan, you are safe here. I want you to know that. Now let's talk some shit. So first off, let's talk about the location of this Cheesecake Factory. When I decided to make this build, I said to myself, hmm, I'm going to have to use Dine Out pretty heavily, which inarguably was probably one of the first controversial packs to be released. Why not put it in the world of the most recent controversial pack? It feels like a full circle moment to me as I complete my collection. So if we look at the exterior of this build, lots of things are happening. Usually Cheesecake Factories are in a mall, a strip mall, something like that. So you don't often see the back of one. Uh, for this one, the exterior is based pretty heavily on one specific Cheesecake Factory, but I did take liberties throughout in kind of blending all of the different styles of Cheesecake Factory that are out there. This one has an octagonal room just kind of hanging out on the side over there, and then a weird sticky outy bit in the back. Let's talk about the general feeling of the Cheesecake Factory. What is it giving, you know? To me, the Cheesecake Factory feels like the genre of music world through the lens of a major corporation, or just some guy that wanted to do a thing and had a lot of money. There's not really a stance that the Cheesecake Factory has. It's more just a color of beige, warm beige that is consistent from one to the next. And there's also not a ton of consistency in terms of the style of decor that's used. As you can see on this building, I'm using a little bit of everything. We have some nice stucco on the outside. We have some very Grecian looking pillars. We have a lot of stuff from the vampires pack looking very Victorian and romantic. We have some very collegiate kind of things with the friezes from the university pack. 
We also have some sort of like Mayan Aztec accents from the Jungle Adventure Pack. The aesthetic of Cheesecake Factory is really a collection of things from everywhere that don't typically go together, but are all the same color. And they don't really have a stance. And that color is warm beige, you know? And then you take that consistency of color and you do this like light wash of mid-2000s contemporary over it and you have the Cheesecake Factory. So specifically here, I'm talking about those swirls that were equally as prevalent in wrought iron sculptural designs as they were in carpet and movie theaters. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And it was at this point in the build when I said to myself, what would make the Cheesecake Factory experience, famously a bar, restaurant, and bakery, what would make that experience heightened even more? It's a wedding venue, y'all. <laughs> Yes, that is correct. (laughs) The city of Tartosa is happy to welcome their newest franchise partnership in their wedding conglomerate, the Cheesecake Factory, now offering in this flagship location, wedding planning and efficient services. What a concept. I realize that there is just so much space around this build and we are seaside here. So why not take advantage of the view in the back? So you can see here, I'm setting up the back of the Cheesecake Factory (laughs) for all of your wedding needs. And one of the things that I particularly love here is that, you know, I was thinking about what this experience might be like for the staff at the Cheesecake Factory if they had to be not only a bar, not only a restaurant, not only a bakery, but now a wedding venue. What is that going to mean for them? I feel like it's kind of funny to think as a wedding comes in, Essentially, all they have to do to prep is move two tables in the back. (laughs) So you can see that I kind of just put the chairs off to the side next to the dumpster area and the two tables. One of them is actually being used to hold champagne for the newlywed couple with the wedding arch and the chairs and everything kind of being set up in the back. Uh, I just wanted to take a beat and do a little bit of landscaping. So I went through the extremely painstaking process of going through the entire catalog of the debug menu to find the native plants of Tartosa. So I had to go through the whole pack and landscape what I hope you perceive to be as the most beautifully landscaped cheesecake factory you've ever seen in your life, because look at the material. Now we're in the interior of the build. Let's take a minute. Uh, This was a lot. So there's a lot of things going on inside Cheesecake Factory. There's a lot of platform, levels, different types of tile, paints, materials. I needed to take some time to really do some trial and error in how to make this work. The Sims 4 is not kind to platforms uh, on buildings that have foundations, which this one does, and it's even less kind to platforms that have rounded corners, which this one does. So you'll probably see throughout this video there are a lot of weird lighting effects going on. Certain elements have outdoor lighting on them, I have no idea why. So you can see here the entryway has our massive bar featuring the Batu bar. And at this point, I'm really working on fine tuning the feel of the Cheesecake Factory. One of the most iconic elements of the Cheesecake Factory is the absolutely massive pillars. And uh, this game doesn't really let you do that. So I spent a lot of time experimenting on ways that I could create equally as massive and ridiculous pillars for this build. Almost all of this cut out, but I'm pretty happy with where I landed and I only ended up including one. I would have loved to have a dozen of them because that would be fitting, but based on the amount of space and you know how this game works, we didn't need it. So we got one pillar. Another thing that I tried to do with this build was really layer objects to be as close to the Cheesecake Factory as I could. Now I'm gonna talk directly at you Cheesecake Factory aficionados. If I put down an object in this build and if you're looking at it saying, that's not Cheesecake Factory. I will let you know that every item I have placed has a reference image. Every item. It was difficult to find artwork that was non-committal enough. And by that I mean like pieces of artwork that are just vague suggestions of an idea. I ended up having my sim self paint some murals and I used that in a little cubby in the back which I think worked pretty well. But in terms of the overall decor that's available in all of the Sims 4 pack, There's just something unique about what we can find at the Cheesecake Factory that isn't available in The Sims 4 yet. I did my best. Another thing I want to point out is that in The Sims 4, we only have one booth option that came with the Dine Out Pack. And let me tell you, she's thick, like silly thick. 
So I couldn't use those in this build. It wasn't given the vibe. So what I did instead was use a love seat from the Snowy Escape Pack. Those seats won't be functional, but everything else is. If you want to use this as a restaurant, we got a lot of options for seating. We got four seaters, three seaters, two seaters, and one seater. I should also point out that this build is set up to be many, many venues. So it can be a wedding venue. It can be a restaurant, bar, lounge, nightclub, or cafe. It has all the objects for all of those lots, and you can use it to your heart's content because the Cheesecake Factory is famously all of those things. Another interesting thing about the Cheesecake Factory is that they have a surprising number of wicker chairs. All right, and then that's going to about wrap up all the footage I have for the interior build. I had to spend a lot of time with this, uh, kind of fine-tuning and tweaking things as I went along, because there's just so much. Let's just do a tour. I would love to know if you feel like this truly feels like a Cheesecake Factory, whether you're a fan or not. And so here's the exterior at night. You can see those little twinkling star lights on the exterior of the building at the top. We're also getting some weird lighting effects out here that I really tried to resolve, but oh, hey, Judith. Uh, so, okay, let's, let's go into the build. And okay, we're starting off great. I'm noticing right now that those lamps are lopsided. So really happy about that. And also we have an employee sleeping on a love seat in the entrance. So things are going really well in this Cheesecake Factory. Okay, so here is our massive Batu bar. This is also a uh, up and coming hotspot. So uh, you'll see paparazzi here all the time because that makes sense. And we have vampires on the staff. Okay, vampires in Tartosa. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to the, back to the bar. That's the bar. Um, Jeez. Okay, here's the primary dining area. And Vlad works here. Okay, we got two vampires on the staff. Vlad works here. I mean, why not? What are you going to do after 200 years? I don't know. Um, okay, because this is a wedding venue, here is a dance area. Oh, I didn't even mention this earlier. Really quickly, that door there uh, is, is a Get Famous door that leads to nowhere, which feels absolutely appropriate for the Cheesecake Factory. And then uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the build, this little um, cubby back here. This really feels like the Cheesecake Factory to me with those like big swirling kind of sculptural elements in the ceiling. Honestly, I wish I could have used those more in this build, but they're an object that when you put the walls down, they don't go down with them. And just from a playability standpoint, because I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I, I think this is a great build. I tried really hard on this. <laughs> Harder than I probably should have, and uh, I really wanted it to be as functional as possible. So, and then, unfortunately, as we go outside, we have a really beautiful wedding venue. Oh my gosh, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, so here's the Cheesecake Factory's first wedding venue. You know, like I said, I really tried to use the native plants that are in this area, to make it feel like it really belongs. I also was able to find these twinkling lights that you can see in the background that are just a part of the world. I'm able to have them on the lot. But then, you know, as you are giving yourself away, you realize that you are, in fact, at a cheesecake factory. Um, as you turn to face the building, you realize you're surrounded by citronella candles. <laughs> you see the table and chairs that were pushed out of the way to accommodate your wedding are just kind of off to the side, next to a dumpster. And then, yeah, we didn't talk about the employee area too much. Um, there's nothing too much going on here. Got some trash, and then as we go inside, pretty simple. Here's our kitchen. We can see Vlad getting upset with people. And then I realized as I was doing this little tour that the ladder that I put in to get to the roof is gone, so... We're going to uh, real quickly take after Vlad and do a little bit of flying. And then, yeah, up on the roof, we have just an, a little employee hangout spot. Somebody's got to come up here and manage this big advertising billboard. So why not kick back and enjoy these picturesque 360 views of Tartosa on a long, hard day after a long, hard day. And you can also take a little bit of a peek into the Cheesecake Factory. Um, if you get tired of looking at the incredible sunset on the ocean. And yeah, that's, there's Tartip, and there's Judith, and there she goes. 
<sighs> Y'all, I hope you liked this build. This is a stupid, stupid video that I spent a stupid amount of time on. I hope that you like this. I would love to know what you think. If you would like to download this build and see it for yourself, uh, you can find me on the gallery. My name is the same as it is here, Patrick Creates. Tell me what you think about this stupid idea that I have. If you are an expert in all things Cheesecake Factory, please let me know uh, how you feel about my interpretation of your favorite restaurant, because I would love to know. I feel like I did an okay job. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got today. I hope that y'all liked this video. If you want to see more like this, please feel free to subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me a like, find me on the gallery. I'm going to go work on purging the obscene amount of information that I have about the Cheesecake Factory from my brain. So, until next time, y'all.